This is um, Matt Powell from his YouTube channel, Matt Powell Official. Uh, I don't know why he's got an official on the end of it, but there you go. Yes, Matt Powell is a young earth creationist, and he is an unbelievable moron and science-denying half-wit. Um, he puts all his faith and trust in the Bible. Anyway, Matt, the floor is all yours. Google says if you type in when monkeys surf, feel free to just type that in if you want on your phone. I won't judge you. Um, when monkeys surf, these are the first things that pop up. Now, evolution literally teaches that monkeys, they had to get to South America somehow because they found fossils over there. So the only way that monkeys could have gotten to the United States from Africa was surfing. The monkeys that sailed across the Atlantic to South America, BBC. Monkeys suddenly appeared in South America about 40 billion years ago. Unlikely though it may seem, they probably sailed there from Africa. Prehistoric monkeys traveled 900 miles between continents on rafts. You know, surfing monkeys, surfing dinosaurs, it's perfectly plausible. <laughs> monkeys who sailed 900 miles across the Atlantic. Intrepid monkeys, according, again according to scientists, made an improbable sea voyage from Africa to South America on a raft, picture it, on a raft 34 million years ago. They're saying that the only way they could have got there is climbing on a little, little raft. They also find that dinosaurs crossed the ocean. This is what evolution teaches. This is new stuff. They always tell me, Matt, stop making arguments from the creationists from the 90s. Well, those are great arguments that they made. But these are from 2020. This is from 2020. They just released this. Because Africa was isolated by the deep oceans at that time, duck-billed dinosaurs must have crossed hundreds of kilometers of open water, rafting on debris. According to evolution theory, they surfed there. <laughs> the, the article literally says that the, the duck-billed dinosaurs must have crossed hundreds of miles of open water. Hmm, guys, I wonder if that's what evolution actually says. All I had to do was a simple Google search, and this was the very first thing that came up. Dinosaurs cro once crossed oceans. First duck-billed dinosaur fossil discovered in Africa. You know, Matt's right about that. This is what they're saying, but they want to tell you that God's word is inferior. They want to tell you all oh, the Bible it just doesn't have the answers. People like Matt Powell um, really piss me off. The fact that he's going around and, and claiming that he's trying to rid the world of all these lies really irritates me. He dumbs it all down to make it sound stupid to his audience because it's a lot easier if you make something sound stupid to convince him it's, it's wrong or it's flawed. Beards can really take a hit. University of Utah researchers discovered human beards evolved to absorb punches to the head and jaw. And my beard grow a little more. <laughs> Research shows that Flowing facial hair might have evolved to help fight hungry humans better absorb blows to the head. So what evolution teaches us is that when we were primates, we fought so much and so hard and hit each other in the jaw that our jaw had to create a cushion in our face. <laughs> Folks, that is weird, okay? That's not just unscientific, okay? That is weird. Alpha male's got yeah, a <laughs> caveman comes by. <laughs> Fortunately, no humans were slugged in the name of science. So why, why not? not? Yeah, this isn't science. So you gotta put it to the test. I mean, real life yeah. experiment. Hey, well, put it to the test. Let <laughs> my beard grow a little more. <laughs> 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 Does that hurt? Nope, we've got a beard. They teach that dinosaurs devolved into chickens. Yes, science has compelling evidence that dinosaurs evolved into chickens. Now, folks, if it's survival of the fittest, only the strongest survive in evolution theory, which one is stronger? They say, well, if you have a hundred or a thousand chickens, I, I'm sorry, they're not going to win against their, their great, 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 great grandfather. They went from the largest creature that could eat you down to my favorite lunch at KFC. 
because it was a perfect dinosaur skeleton that just had feathers on it. And now we know that there are a host of dinosaurs that were completely feathered, including Velociraptor. I'm sure you've heard of Velociraptor, right? Did you know they were fully plumed? Fully plumed, <coughs> covered in feathers. Like I said, if you're an evolutionist and you want to find dinosaurs, you could find living ones today. Here in my hand, I actually hold proof of evolution. Want to hear about dinosaurs? Do I ever <laughs> want to hear about dinosaurs? Turns out that, uh, so this is a new report from British scientists, and they said that basically the dinosaurs, they also warmed the planet, uh, thanks to all the gas that they emitted from eating all the leafy plants. And in all, they emitted a total of 520 million tons per year of global methane, which is, they say is a level comparable to the total given off today by animals and industrial activity. So they, they farted their way to extinction. They literally teach that dinosaurs farted themselves to death. That they, and then one guy says, well, you have Matt, you have misrepresented us. We believe that they, they tooted and it warmed the environment. That sounds even more stupid. And that's why they died. They died from the global warming. <laughs> Dinosaurs did fart themselves into extinction. All their greenhouse gases caused climate change, which caused a uh, you know, an ice age, and they all froze to death. And this stuff is just crazy, but this is the crowd that wants to tell you not to keep your purity. They think that they have the advice for life. They don't have the advice for life. Just last month, a rock fell from the sky, and they said, there's the answer. It has the ingredients for life. There's the answer. That's lazy science. A rock falls from the sky onto somebody's driveway, and they say, well, it contained the ingredients, though, Matt. Okay, big deal. I could put a frog in a blender, blend it up. That is all the ingredients for life. But I don't expect the frog to put itself back together and start hopping around again. So today is going to be another first for the response list. Today, we're going to be responding to a 22-year-old pastor named Matt Powell. There is no logic at all into believing that one day, God just decided to poof us into existence. This one atheist responded to me recently. He's like, there's no logic at all into believing that one day God just magically poofed us into existence. Isn't that what the Big Bang teaches? It was a poof. So let me ask you, because they say, well, you Christians believe in magic. Okay, what's magical? Somebody creating the universe or matter and energy creating itself from nothing? Funny, you said earlier, they can't think for themselves. Buddy, you are 22 years old. Buddy, if there's anyone that doesn't think for themselves, I would say that it's freaking you. If we evolved from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Well, because we're not monkeys. We're fish. Now, knowing you're a fish and not a monkey is actually really important to understanding where we came from. People that take and consider this. They don't think about what they're even being told, that they evolved from a sponge, or that we all evolved from literal jellyfish. That's what evolution teaches, is that we evolved from jellyfish. I always like to ask people, do you think that your ancient ancestor was a fish? You know, it's like the incredible Mr. Limpet 2.0. I wish, I wish I were a fish. Well, according to them, we were fish millions of years ago. Many of us were taught evolution wrong. You and I are fish. One fish lineage came onto land and gave rise to, among other things, the mammals and reptiles. Perhaps it's better still to think of us as a little fish out of water. Evolutionists claim it says one plausible explanation in our view is that the genes are likely new extraterrestrial imports to Earth. These scientists declare that, quote, the squid eggs 
hitched a ride to Earth on the back of asteroids. That is what evolution teaches, folks. I am not kidding. I was in an interview with a friend of mine who's got it. He's an actual creation scientist. Now, him and I don't see eye to eye on everything, but he brought this up, and I thought he was joking with me. I said, are you serious? We cut for a moment. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is what they teach? He said, yeah, it's what they teach. I looked it up. Sure enough, evolution teaches that they hitched a ride on the back of asteroids. Doesn't that sound fun? And they don't get along anyways. Squids and octopuses are constantly fighting each other, so I don't know how they made it here to begin with. But of course they were eggs, and, and the, the article goes on to say that they were, you know, they were fertilized. They don't know how, but they were fertilized so that they could hatch when they hit the water. Do you really believe that something came from nothing? Yes. Because there are laws, such as gravity, the universe can, and will, create itself from nothing. They always accuse us Christians, they say, well, that, that, that book you've got right there, uh, that's, that's magic. That's a magic book. No, you know what's magical? Saying that the universe came from nothing. What's magical, folks? God creating the universe, or time, space, and matter poofing into existence from nothing? What if I said a giant boulder popped into existence right in the middle of this auditorium? 